What is it like to be the most popular black and Chinese TikToker and Instagrammer? We're here with Ryan Holmes. Ryan Alexander Holmes, man. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Ryan Alexander Holmes. That's my Chinese name. Uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I'm black and Chinese and I won't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's a funny way of putting it. I, you know, uh, you were saying that your Chinese name came first and then your English name came second, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ryan An. And then obviously that sounds so like Ryan. So Ran An turned into Ryan. So it's almost yeah. like the reverse of a lot of ABCs where sometimes they base the Chinese name off yeah. the English. Yeah, it was all sort of, yeah, it was all. You know what? If they don't know about you right now, let's play a couple of your uh, yeah. most popular clips. Hey, mom. Yeah. Why'd you choose dad? Hey, dad. Why'd you choose mom? I didn't choose that. I was down on my luck. She, she was the worst thing that I ever uh, okay, that's experienced. Enough. That's enough. That's but enough. I that's really enough. That, that's enough. That's enough. Because I know certain Chinese Americans who tell me like, oh yeah, my parents didn't teach me Chinese on purpose. And they would say like, you're not Chinese, you're American. And so I'm not going to teach you the language. You don't need to know the culture. You need to assimilate into American culture. I think that's sad. That is sad. I'm trying to be in those parents' shoes, right? Yeah. What's their logic? I kind of get it. They get want it. their kids just to have an easier time. Yeah. Let's not worry about your Mandarin skills. Let's just worry about your English skills right now. Yeah. I can kind of see the logic. Because it's almost logic. like, how would that help you be successful when we're in a different country? Like, in their mind. To speak their language yeah, as opposed like, to yours? It's also like some weird kind of level of respect and practicality. You are very, very lucky that you grew up with family members speaking that language to you. I realize that like every day, too. Yo, Ryan. Just to clarify for people, your mom is from Taiwan. Your dad is from what? Louisiana. No, dad's from Florida. Florida, okay. Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida. Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. And so your dad is black American. Yes. Okay. Because right, a lot of people might think he's your dad slave is, black. <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of people th might think that he was like Caribbean or Jamaican or something like right, because mm. there's a lot of black oh, Asian yeah, mixes yeah, yeah. in Jamaica and yeah. things like that. And, uh, There's a lot of Guyana. Jamaican Chinese. No, and, and your mom yeah. is a, from Taiwan, so from she's Taiwan. a fob. Yeah. And you grew up... <laughs> hold on, this is another piece of information people know. You grew up in the 626 San Gabriel Valley, Pasadena yeah. area yeah, 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 yeah. with your Taiwanese side, yes. mostly. Yes. Correct. Yes. All right. right. My, my dad's side, they all live in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Like the whole black side. Right. And like pretty much was raised in a Chinese environment with my Chinese side very present. And right. But always being perceived visually by, I'm assuming, your, by yeah. your environment in the world as black. As, oh. as black, as, as light-skinned black. Yeah. Mixed. Yeah, mixed. Right. But uh, never Chinese. Is All it right? interesting now, and, and tell me if you agree with this or not, you're like an Asian-American influencer, but a black actor in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, which is interesting, because here's the thing, like on social media, I define who I am, but in the industry, it's like especially as an upcoming actor, the roles that are coming in are not Asian man. You know right. what I mean? They're like, they're ethnically ambiguous. They're like black and white or black or the, or the race doesn't matter. But like, did, I'm not Did you get Asian asked to roles. play Puerto Rican or Dominican? Yes. And right. Middle Eastern too. Can oh, you, you do it? To play like Moroccan? Can, I, it's not Can the you time play? to do that. I feel like it's not the time. It's not the social climate. Right. I'm ready for that. <laughs> what, what, you, can you do a fake Dominican accent? Would you be like, hey, papi? Hey, like, papi, I'm, I'm, I'm Dominican. I'm not black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, what is it like? I mean, now, I guess, we, let's just get into the social media side because probably people immediately tuning in, they're more familiar with that side of you. Yeah. When did, how did that come up? Obviously, you, you're drawing from a lifelong realm of experience, but like, what made you decide to do that? Because probably for a mm. while you were just trying to come up in the mainstream industry, right? Yeah, it was, it's so different. Like my mindset now, because as an actor, when I first graduated from drama school, I would look at like the influencing world or I'd be like, I'm not doing that. I'm a real artist. I'm an actor. And then, you know, when COVID hits, right, uh, there's no creative outlets. And then as a black and Asian dude, I'm seeing like both my sides getting attacked, but also attacking each other. And I'm like, I have to, I have to speak about this. And so my vehicle was like using social media for that and using my voice and my humor and my acting ability to create sketches and create levity. So, so what, time. I mean, and we talked about this before with you. It's like, you want to just have that conversation. Like you're yeah. ready for that black always. and Asian conversation. I'm always ready. And when people I ask you to speak on like the Asian side or the black side, like, Hey man, Ryan, like what's the relationship between the black and Asian community? 
I'm sure it's a complicated answer and it's a complicated conversation, but you're ready to have it. It, it is and it's not because like I just show my family. Like I used to think that I needed to like convince people and like with words, but if I just show my me getting dim sum with my grandma, they're like, oh, I see it actually, it can work. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're saying that, you're saying, pro, like, because even your influencing journey has seen a crazy yeah. change over the years, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wait, I mean, do you ever feel like, and this is a question because you kind of, because you're representing both sides, does it ever feel like people are looking at you for all the answers, though? Like, you're inspiration, but do people look to you for answers and be like, Ryan, explain yeah, how the, I guess, I guess how can look, the black yeah. and Chinese communities exist do they, together? Do they look Give us the like plan. A, like a solution, yeah. or is it more just like, but, oh yeah, that's just, your, your, both your parents are super open-minded outliers of each world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's a little bit of both, for sure. Um, but I wouldn't act, act like I'm the black and Asian guru that has all the answers, because I don't. But I can tell when people are wrong because they're using stereotypes to dictate how they think I can sort of like, I guess what are the common misconceptions? Just maybe, obviously I'm sure there's a lot of them. What are the most common two, three? Like, I mean, Oh, I'll talk about my experience growing up. Like I grew up in a Chinese environment, you know, uh, that was mostly like white and Asian and like the, the white kids and the Asian kids in that environment said that I didn't act black enough and that they're trying to tell me how, how, what black meant. And I'm like that the audacity to like tell a black person when you're not black, how they need to act because they're conditioned by what they're seeing in media. Right. They're seeing criminals, they're seeing crackheads, they're seeing us portrayed in a certain way, gangsters. And they're like, why don't you talk like that? Why don't you play those sports? You know what I mean? And so I had to deal with that. So I know how these people think and how they're conditioned Right. And, and so you're saying these people are socioeconomically what more upper middle class. They're more upper middle class, upper middle class for sure. So they're yeah. looking at you. They're like, why don't you have yes. a rap career? Why don't you? Why aren't you playing? Why aren't you playing basketball? Why aren't you prioritizing like rap music or wearing baggy clothes? Like, why do you basically like? Why do you act like us? Uh, Which is crazy because I'm in your. Uh, we're in the same community. What do you mean? Why I act like you? Right. Like just because I'm black, I have to talk a certain way. But but but, but Ryan, way. it would be really cool to have like a Will Smith type friend. You're yeah. like a Fresh Prince but, Will Smith. But do yeah. you think that there would have been some? <laughs> That's what exactly what they would say though. Do you think there would have been some black people or mixed black people in your situation that would have given in and fulfilled everybody's? They did. Oh, you saying other kids that I wasn't really the only one. I say I was the only one because it was like point one percent. But they, yeah, there was other like. One or two other and you're saying black that they would, they or mixed would black, be more like all right, yeah, and they I'll just hoop, I'll rap, I'll do. They just or they just sort of like became invisible. Do you know what I mean? Okay. They just became invisible, and they didn't try to, they didn't try to appease, and they didn't try to not appease, but they still weren't themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So you're saying that that is one a really common misconception, like you said, from the white and the Asian kids that you grew up with. Yeah, they're trying to imprint. I mean, these are. <laughs> We don't need to talk to them. Those are larger, just macro American yeah, that's, archetypes or stereotypes. But I'm not going to lie. Like, I did. I did appease that for a little bit. Like, I did think that I needed to be black in that way. And I thought I was making the decision. But I wasn't. And when my dad saw me do that and wear baggy clothes and get braids and tr start, try to start talking different, he was like, son, you need to... You need to I don't know what the fuck you're doing right now. You need to take a chill pill. So your dad, yeah. who is black American from Jacksonville, Florida, yeah. told you, yo, Ryan, chill on that. Like, Well, he That's, was like, is that what you think black is? Okay, right. let me show you what black is. That's when like the real education started. That's when I was getting parent homework about African American, true African American history. Not what they taught me in that school because they didn't really teach it. You know? right. um, and, yeah, and so, so my journey really kind of began at that crux moment and that's when my dad took me to a, a black track club in the black part of Pasadena and I learned what the black community was firsthand as opposed to watching BET videos or seeing the news you know what I mean right. and so my whole perception changed because now it's a real it's, it's a real situation and it's a diverse sort of understanding of what black is because right, there is a historical black community in Pasadena yeah. which is quite near to where you were yeah like, exactly it, 10 miles feels like a world away right yeah especially when you're a kid you don't have a car right right you don't know anywhere. anything beyond like essentially yeah. like a mile away from where you grew exactly. up exactly right? I guess exactly. what did you learn there that was different from what people perceive on because obviously yeah. there, maybe those things are that, that is a part of the inner city culture right but then there's, it's so much more than that. In short, 
I learned that I could just be myself. That's what I learned, you know? And I learned, like, the humanity of what blackness is, you know? Okay. I got to interact with actual black people. Right, right, right. <laughs> and that have a diverse range of and, interests and, and a diverse... And think set. about that. Like, the kids who I was growing up with never interacted with any black people at all, right? But they're telling this black kid that they do know... That's how strong the conditioning is, you know, in America. Like, you never interact yeah. with, a, with an ethnic group and you see one in your environment and you're like, you need to act like what I think you are, not what you actually yeah, are. Yeah, they need them yeah. to, because yeah. for people, it's so much energy for them to break their frame of mind of yeah. what they already believe. Exactly. Like people learning new things is hard. Yeah. So they're learning from you that, yeah. oh, not all kids with black blood or with African blood act like that. Have and they're just like, like but they're, but because they already are so deep in that image that they yeah. have, then it's hard. It, it just takes time to reverse it. And that's, that's the power of sort of representation too, you know, yeah. for real. When you got to the more historical black American community in Pasadena, what, what judgments did they have of you being from the Asian and more upper middle class area? Or, or was there none? They were just like, you just buy, but there you definitely me. wasn't none, but they accepted me differently. Even if they did roast me and you know, my skateboard shoes at track practice or like the fact that I said radical and dude all the time. Like it wasn't sort of like a, it wasn't like, Oh, because you speak that way, we're not messing with you and you need to change. It was just like, that's funny that you say all those things, you know? Right. Right. Just pointing it out. Like yeah. That's just a different, but they weren't like, get out of here. Are you run by? Well, do you or? think for them, they're more used to dealing with like mixed black people already, like light skinned black guys that maybe like, maybe that's how you were perceived at first. Like if they can't understand yeah. that you're actually half Chinese, then they probably just say, uh, yeah, Ryan's light skin. Well, the difference <laughs> is the fact, yeah, they do say that, but the difference also is that they see me as human. Right, right, right. They actually see my humanity, whereas the other ones in my in my environment saw me as a, a caricature, but they were trying to make me a caricature, actually. Like, right. I was well, a human, but they were trying to make me a caricature. Yeah, they, I, I could see that. I, I wanted to ask you, and this might, maybe it's a tough question, but I guess how do you define being black and how do you define being Chinese? And, what like, what what is it about those? Those two groups are generally pretty different, but there's also... A lot of mixture. Because I noticed, for example, and this is just to me to provide a, a contrasting example. Like if you talk to like a person who's mixed black and Jamaican, I mean, uh, Jamaican Chinese, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. they're actually mm -hmm. Chinese from Jamaica or mm -hmm. their blood is mixed. They yeah. always just say it as like, well, I'm just Jamaican. Yeah. And I just want to show people the totality of that Jamaicans can be mixed. Yeah. But but that's that that is Jamaica because people are part Indian, part every, yeah. you know, Arawak. Absolutely. But I'm saying that like, I guess for yours, it is a little bit more of a, a recent mix. Yeah, right? it's not like a you're from an ancient mixed country like Brazil or like yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to answer your question, it's just like, what does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be Chinese? Honestly, man, like identity really isn't everything. I think what people, what people, where people get lost is the fact that like they've learned to actually not love themselves and love their identity. You know what I mean? But the first thing that you have to do is love your identity before you can love yourself because at least in America, and maybe this is a worldly thing, you're taught to not love yourself if you are a minority. You know what I mean? I think there is this idea of Eurocentricity being uplifted to a, a, a place where people want to strive towards that. And sometimes they don't even know they're striving towards that. They're just like confused, right? And so for me, it's like, it's not, it's, it's, Yes, I love my blackness, and yes, I love being Chinese. I embrace that so much, and I, do, and I embrace it for myself, not for some, anybody else, not even for the community. I don't embrace it for the community. I embrace it for myself, and then I can be in the community and exude that. But, like, I don't, I'm not beholden to my identity or beholden to a community. I'm going to be myself. And then I enter those communities as myself, and I love them for themselves. Right. There is no way of acting black. There is no way of acting Chinese. But you y'all know, like if someone comes into a community and they're just acting funny, you know, or they're looking at you a you, different you, kind of way because they don't love themselves and they don't love the community. Therefore, right, they don't love right. the community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I'm trying I, I, to, I see that at a lot of Asian events. Actually, You know what I'm talking see, about? There's people who are like they didn't necessarily gain the foothold or the status in another community. So they're coming back to the Asian yes. community, but they're still there looking at everybody with a kind of weird and eye. The, and here's the thing that I had to learn too, is like you, when you enter in spaces, sometimes you're projecting the idea that you think they're projecting, they're, they're giving you. Like if you go into an environment and you feel like you don't belong, that's what you're going to see. Mm. 
Mm. But if you go into an environment and you feel like, hey, I'm just going to talk to everybody as a human because I love myself and I love my culture, they're going to respond in kind most of the time. You know what I mean? I had to realize that. Because, yeah, I, was, I always felt like an outsider growing up. Right. And I would bring that into environments and then blame the community. It's like, no, it's me. Oh, so you're already bringing kind of the bad energy or the insecurities and the lack of self-love in there. So when, and whether or not, yeah, people sense it or they act off it, or that's, that's the processor that you've chosen to have. So now that everything that happens to you, you're processing it like that. That's the lens you're seeing things through. And the lens is already faulty. Because then now when I'm in my community and someone in the community says some shit to me that is like. You know, you oh Chinese person wouldn't do that. I'm like, that doesn't hit me at the way it used to because I'm just Are like you saying that that used the to the fuck you mean a Chinese person wouldn't do that? I'm Chinese, or right. or even the black community. Someone someone in the black community saying, oh you're not really black. It's like, who the fuck are you to say that? Like, do you speak for the whole black community? Right. You know what I mean? Because who would I be to take? Yeah, I mean their- you run fast. I mean, that's- <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, who would I be to take that and think that like the whole black community is talking to me? Right. Right. That's no, because if you that's people, people love to claim that's prejudice in, it, people, in people love to claim those powers on the internet as like IG commenters, yes. but like yeah. who who are you? you? Yeah, <laughs> who the fuck are you? No, it's like it's like if some random person says it to you, and you get mad about it, then you're giving them that title. But this is the mix. This is the mixed dilemma because a lot of mixed people, that's how it hits them because you know they're not fully. They don't feel like they're fully anything. Fuck that. I say I'm 100 percent Asian, 100 percent black for that reason. Because I'm like, I don't care that you're Chinese or you're Asian. You're telling me about my Asianness. That has nothing to fucking do with me. Ah, you know what I mean? Right, because you're saying if yeah. you identify yourself as, yes, I'm only 50% black and I'm yeah. only 50% Asian. That gives yeah. the full black or full Asian people power yeah. over you. To, to say that. Day. Yeah. And it's like, good point. You, can't t- you can't tell me anything. Like, you can't tell me that shit. Like, and, and what's funny is like, you can't tell a full, a full blur- black person that either. You know what I mean? Because they can act however they want. A full Asian person, they can act however they want. Who, why do people have this idea? Like, where does, for real though, where does it come from that they think they can tell somebody in their community how to act or anybody how to act? Anybody has the freedom to act how they want. Unless, you know, they're bringing the community down, then you can talk shit, I feel like. Then it makes sense, at least. Right, right, right. I guess what are some arbitrary things, if just to, you know, give the internet some yeah. Like, what are some arbitrary things that you've done where somebody from any community, whether it's the Asian side, black side, or even the white side, was like, oh, I didn't think you'd do that or whatever? Like, I don't know. Just there's so much dumb shit. I'm sure you get comments too. Like, I try to erase them from my mind as much as I can, but yeah, I don't know. Like, there's just over time, like, the way I speak, you know what I mean? My voice. That's been a, that's been something that people have talked about. Or like, you know, the clothes I wear, you know what I mean? But, but it's, but I don't take it seriously because it's not coming from a real place anyway. Right. Mm. Think about, I mean, think about like Tyler, the creator. Like, is he not black because he dresses the way he dresses? Because he's a skater. Yeah. Is that not black? I got made fun of when I was a kid because I wore skateboard shoes and I skateboarded. Like, right. Is that not black? Because now like. There's but now hella the black, black skaters. No, but now the black skater archetype, where it's uh, whether it's little Uzi or yeah. It's a so these, there's these limiting beliefs, and then it takes like someone who's like, "Nah, I'm gonna do what I want to do," and then now it's black. Like, so I'm always questioning that shit. <laughs> right. Like, what is black? What is Asian? What does that really mean? Because if you're telling someone they can't do something because they're Asian or they're black or whatever they are, that's just a limiting belief. Mm. Yeah. No, I agree. I with don't you. abide I by any of that. So I guess when people ask you now, now, you know, we talked a little bit about your past and what led you through this crazy arc of understanding and transformation. Yeah. I guess what is your goal now as a, uh, influencer? Mm-hmm. Do you have any goals or like, like obviously the content has even changed over time, right? Yeah. It's changed a lot. I, I think, I mean, I, I really want to bring people together and, and serve people and, and to make people love themselves, the, the message was very specific. It was very black and very Asian, uh, very mixed. But like, for me, I just want to help everybody. And I do think my message is universal. It's like, basically, society will tell you that you're one thing, but you don't have to abide by what you... And sometimes it's not even what society is saying. It's what you think society is saying mm. that, that makes you determine who you are. 
But like, who do you really want to be? What do you really want to do? Why are you listening to the, these lies in your head and, and going and, and thinking that society should have any sort of, or other people's opinions should have any sort of grasp or power over you when it doesn't. Right. That's really the crux of my message, really. But, you know, I always, I love my culture, so I'll always do it in a cultural lens or mostly do it in a cultural lens, but I don't think that you have to be from these cultures to understand I, that. I agree with what you're saying about being able to break free from all these, like, uh, I believe in sociology, they call it, like, habitus. Habitus is the way, the different sunglasses that even, like, a, two brothers in the same family could have different ha different sunglasses yeah. that they view life through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's almost like you had were born into a certain situation where you, like, questioned everybody's habitus of viewing you more than, cause you know, I was like some people, they are born like more stereotypical. Like I'm Asian. I like Valorant. I like gaming. I like Starcraft. I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know if, exactly I could what you're be saying. born into something where it's like everything. Like they like the fits. thing that most people in their community like basically. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. I'm saying that those people, they don't question it society's habit is viewing them because they almost fit into it. Yeah, they just, well, they fit in period in it. I don't think that actually has that much to do with culture. It's just like, what is the culture? What is most people, what, it, what are people, what do people perceive as most people doing? Because sometimes not most people in the community are doing it. It's just what people perceive as most people in the community are doing, right? So I would even question that too, because like, is it, are you, do you still, like, I know, it's, like, I don't like EDM music, and sometimes people would be like, oh, you're not being Asian by yeah. not liking EDM or techno. But you see how ridiculous, that, that's what I'm getting at. You see how ridiculous that really is? Who is someone to say you're not Asian because you don't listen to EDM music? Right, well, because it's from you know Sweden I mean? anyway, originally, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, I always question that. I always question, and, and honestly, like, the people who are attacking you, they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are if they think that EDM, EDM music is who they are. Right. Do you know what I mean? Or or should define them. Yeah, what a ridiculous you. identity is to be like, <laughs> yeah, EDM is my personality. That's what I'm saying. And that's all I'm about. And then attaching it to like Asian culture yeah. or something. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I guess talk about being a Hapa, right? But most people, when they're thinking Hapa, they're typically thinking, I guess, statistically more commonly an Asian woman with a white guy. Yeah. Your mom is a I mean, there's Asian more woman from a from a pretty proper Taiwanese family, right? Yeah, yeah. Your dad is a Black American. Yeah. Uh, but I guess would you say your dad wasn't necessarily was is like also what they met in college? They no, they met uh, later in life in their professional and professional like careers. Oh, at a corporation together. No, my mom was a Chinese reporter for the LA News uh, and also taught uh, Chinese to like high profile clients. And my dad was an international lawyer, and that's how they met. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess, what do you perceive, like, would some people call your dad, like, a very, like, uh, like, a you know, a bougie black guy? Or something <laughs> like, that? like ah! They would say, I mean, he's an educated, very educated, well-spoken black man. So he could get, he could sort of get that sort of moniker placed on, upon him. Like an Obama type. Yeah, I would say, I mean, he would love that. He would love that. So. <laughs> like he's going to like that part. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll agree to that. Yeah, more, yeah, you know, black intelligentsia, you know, has a law degree, you know, has an engineering degree. He's very smart, um, very educated, very like, you know, uh, loves to learn and instilled that in us too. Mm -hmm. So that's where he's coming from. But he also grew up in poverty, you know. Right. He came from like a lower, lower class, working class it, environment. Do you, do you think there's a, is there, a, from what you notice, a chip on a lot of like black and Asian, Blasian shoulders on the internet at least in the comment section when like every time hop is brought up half asians are brought up they're usually referring to Asians, white and asians yeah not well, black and asians which yeah. there are quite a few black mm -hmm. and asians but yeah. they're not getting the shine or the i guess the eyeballs aren't on them you so know we'll say this we'll say like could you imagine a Blasian in crazy rich asians instead of a Asian? well there was as a the ton love of interest asians. there was a ton of Asians. you know but as a love interest could no. you even see that? Well, all right. Or imagine take, that. Well, it take place in, in, in Asia does make a little less sense. No, I'm just saying. Like, oh, but yeah. Henry Golding is white and Asian. Why couldn't that be but, a but black he, and Asian yeah, guy? He played full Chinese and he's half Malaysian and half white. Yeah. Did he play full Chinese or you just never no, saw his dad? No, he played full Chinese. But you just uh, never saw it, his it's dad? It's like assumed. It's assumed he's like they full never, Asian. They never mentioned okay. that he's half white. But I, I know what you're saying. Regardless, I know what you're I'm saying. Just, but you know what I'm saying. Remy, yes. Remy was half white too. Yeah. I mean, but it's like, I know what you're saying because... 
Whether it, it's history of colonialism. It's or also what, colorism. Yeah, what we perceive as yes. like. Because you could have a black and Asian guy who looks Asian, but he's darker skin. I couldn't see that either. Like I couldn't a, see that. Like Blasian TW in, in Taiwan. Yeah. Like Wait, I, does he look, but does this person look Filipino maybe? Like a type of Asian. We'll say like a darker, like he, you know how, how Henry Golding passes as full Asian? He doesn't. I can tell because I'm mixed. I don't know. Right. I feel like other people can tell that he's not full Asian. He's yeah, I could. We could but tell. like a black Asian who could pass as full Asian. But being see, in that I'm lead role. I'm trying to imagine what that person looks like. I'm not saying who, imagine what that looks like. I'm, imagine, I'm saying imagine would they green light that project with him in it. To oh, be the lead. Because not. I think globally, yeah. obviously in America, whether that was a, what historically a one drop rule or just the way you're perceived yeah. to be, if you're mixed with black, yeah. you're black, right? Yeah. But both. Yeah. Right? So that's, but that's what I'm saying. I'm, we're also talking about Hollywood greenlighting a project. Right. Hollywood tends to more operate, in my opinion, off the racial categorization uh, chipset that like somebody in the Midwest who's like 55 yeah. well, has in their brain. They're going for middle America. They're going for the safe bet. But the safe bet is a traditional bet. And the traditional bet is based in these stereotypes that you know are centuries old, archaic thinking. Yeah, yeah. Like a 55-year-old you know? from like Kansas City yeah. essentially sees the world like somebody who was like hyper educated like a hundred years ago. It's true, but I feel like they also don't. They also their 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 thinking is also off. I think people are more willing to accept than than they think they are because they're they're more conservative because of the money that they might lose. You know what I'm right, saying? They're just playing That's, an algorithmic like risk mitigation exactly. on the money side. Exactly, mm. exactly. But I think it's getting better in terms of representation. Um, like I yeah. guess when you meet like half white, half Chinese kids, mm -hmm. how do you feel about it? Because or is your black side beefing with their white side or is it is well, it, is it Chinese well that's the thing well the that's Chinese the thing side. with any mixed kid not even just mixed asian and white mixed asian and black it's like you when you meet that person not necessarily i mean right away sometimes you can tell it's like they chose one side or the other like you can oh. kind of tell you know? uh, and yeah, i that's don't interesting bro do you know what i'm talking about though I, did you ever I'm not sense mixed, that man. i don't know man. No, I, 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 i'm not I, saying I, as not because you're not right, mixed right, right. but like just talking to someone that is mixed, and you start talking about culture. Oh yeah, and they oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is generally my sense. Yeah, feel. if they're from Asia, they about sixty forty with the Asian side. If they're from a Western Anglo country, they probably sixty forty. We're talking about mixed Asians. Yeah, yeah. They more with the Western side. Yeah, I think it's especially white kids. But I think it's I don't like know, I'm trying to think of like all the Asians. But I know. you it's just like, think it, it, on a deeper level. It's like the years, the 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 whiteness. You know, it's uplifted in America because this is how it was founded, right? More I would dollars. say globally, to be honest. Globally, too, Eurocentricity. Yeah. So, like, I do see a lot of Asians sort of leaning into that. But even if they're in Asia, they still lean into that. And because Asia loves that, and they, they're like, oh, my God, a Eurasian. They, they uplift that because of the Eurocentric beauty standards. But there's still a connection to these Asians because they're also Asian, too. You know? but, but would you say that I, I feel like uh, that... Blasians even in Asia are more accepted, obviously now than ever before. Of course, yeah. There's it like should be that yeah, way. Yeah, I yeah hope it, it should gets be better. Um, with well, time. Yeah. thankfully there's progress, but yeah. like because for a long time probably they were yeah they faced a lot of barriers to doing whatever but they wanted the to do. But now I, I, yeah, it's it's better, right? You're right. I just don't like the comparison of Asian and Blasian in terms of like who's doing better, or who's better than the other. It's just like we have com two completely different experiences. But also, don't make it seem like they're both equal because they're not. They're different. Yeah, I would you know? agree with that. I know. So, what? I guess how does that inner, um, on a micro level, change interactions with Asians as a Blasian? I mean, you know, on, on a human level, it's like, <laughs> is this person prejudiced towards your black side, black people? <laughs> right, because you know they're probably going to be <laughs> at least okay with the Asian because they're Asian too. Yeah, then, I think it surprises a lot of people too when like. I look this way, but I know so I know how to speak the language and I and I celebrate the culture and I love it too, you know, and I don't choose a side. Do you think the fact that you're a minority on both sides in growing up in the white world? Yeah, see that makes you more even proud of your Asian side than Asians are proud of their Asian side? Uh, on a probability basis. Obviously everybody's family situation that's is a really, hyper unique. Yeah, well I mean it's a really interesting question. It's a case by case basis, obviously, but like, you know, if if we are abiding by this idea, which we've agreed upon that Eurocentricity is uplifted, then wouldn't it be easier to sort of try to blend into that side? You know what I mean? Because yeah, you are legitimately half of the dominant group. But there's a lot of, 
there's a lot of like, you know, self-hate that can occur in those situations because you're accepted, but you're not really accepted. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for me, it's not the same because on the black side, they accept me. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, I don't have that sort of like, oh, we don't really accept you. I think, right. I think the black community is very accepting um, of other ethnic groups if they right, if the, the black, if, black if they see is, them as human it's traditionally also if if you see the black community as human they'll accept you do mm. you know what I'm saying I don't know what it's like to be a white and Asian person trying to fit into a white environment especially if it's like conservative and traditional like the white environment I grew up in you know right. I, I grew up in a white and Chinese environment but it was conservative I, I guess what I'm saying is what what did you think about how the white and Asian kids turned out in your community versus you being black and Asian. Are there white and Asian kids in my community? There's gotta have been. <laughs> like in 66 somewhere. Are there right? Pasadena, there's a lot. But I don't know if I grew up with them. It did, oh, another thing too, it's like phenotype. What society, when that society looks at them, mm -hmm. what do they think they are? Do they think they're white or do they think they're Asian? That determines their whole experience. You know what I mean? Right, From an external standpoint, you know? And yeah. if it's just visual based, oh. then it just really ends up being on who's seeing it. Yeah, because that's the weirdest thing is like, some people will be like, "Oh yeah, well you look kind of Asian, Ryan. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. whatever." And then some people will be like, "I don't see it at all, yeah. man." Like you know, but that's what I'm so talking it, about. It just depends on it's literally the person. But that's it's, and what it's just more be. dangerous when you're a kid. Yeah, and your environment doesn't reflect you at all, so you have to feel like you have to choose a side or sort of acquiesce to what society wants you to do. But like the power is when you grow up and like you're on your own right. to decide. Like actually, like. I don't care what these people are saying. I didn't care what my peers were saying when I was growing up, even though those were my formative years. Like that, they have such a, a, a very like cerebral sort of influence on you. It took me a lot. And I think this is why a lot of mixed kids follow me. It took me a lot to break out of that idea mm. of like, I need to act like this. Cause it, cause sometimes it's on a subconscious level. You don't even yeah. know you're doing it. Yeah. And so I think I show a lot of mixed people like, yo, you don't have to act like what you thought you had to act like. You also don't have to choose a side because I've heard mixed people choose a side. Well, I'm I choose the black side because the Asian part was racist. And like, I know what that feels like. A lot of my first experiences of racism were from the Chinese community, but those are isolated and isolated incidents. So what's crazy is like, you know, a Korean store owner will have some run ins with black people and now he'll hate black people. Isn't that the same thing for me? Like if I interact with some racist Asians and I'm like, fuck the Asian community because they're racist to me, it's the same shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it feels, you, you still look at that racist Korean owner and you're like, he's racist, but like you're doing the same thing. And so I had to really, I had to really investigate what I experienced and how that shaped me and how my decision and my tract maybe was not the best track to go. And so, like, how do I see the truth as opposed to letting my pain speak for me? You know what I mean? And, and making my, letting my pain determine the prejudice that I have towards entire communities, right? How do, I, how do I not necessarily be better, but how do I see the humanity in myself, see the humanity in that Korean store owner who's racist, see why he's conditioned to think that, and how easy it is to get to that place, and how do I get out of that place myself so I can show... Like, I'm just saying this Korean store owner as an example. How do I show that Korean store owner who's developed this idea that black people are criminals and that's all they are? How do I show him what I went through and my prejudice and how I overcame that so that he can overcome his? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not go to him aggressive and be like, why do you hate black people? You shouldn't hate black people. And like, you're racist. It's like, why do you hate black people? Let's talk about that. Oh, but don't you see those are isolated incidents? Don't you see like... There's other black people in the world that don't do that. Maybe then we start talking about structural racism and structural poverty and why that exists. Mm. And then talking about history, which we're not taught. But if you, you asked me the question earlier, like, what is my content really about? It's about that. But through the social media algorithm lens, I got to be or I, I, I choose to be choose to pr provide my message with levity and comedy and irony. You yeah. Know? No, what I see that in. you do actually is similar to what I feel like we do is that you're helping navigate a conversation for people. Yeah. And your conversation is more specific. It's specific because, and there is a need for it because there's not a lot of people in your space navigating that conversation. There are a lot of Blasians, but there's not necessarily a lot of people who have stepped up and decided to take that on 
yeah. and speak on it. Kind of like us, like we know there's a lot of Asians, but a lot of Asians don't talk about these things that we do. So I yeah. think that's that's why it's cool, man. I, I think, think I think it is cool. I also think like, you know, they don't they don't you don't ha- we don't have to talk about these things just because we're Blasian. You don't have to talk about Asian issues just because you're Asian. So I, I think everyone has their lane and they're they're doing their thing and this is my thing but I don't think other Blasians should have to do this if they don't want to. It's just the lane that I've chosen for myself. But I do hope that it gives the courage and, and gives sort of like a, a template maybe for other Blasians or even Asians or black people to have these conversations because sometimes these conversations, people are scared to have them because they think they're going to turn into arguments. They think a race war is going to break out. But no, you can just... The race the wars conver- of America. <laughs> right? You could just have the conversation. Right, There's right, always right. a race war in the comments. I think uh, in 2024, a lot more people are willing to have difficult discussions that 10 years ago would have been like, people would have been like frozen or like, don't talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People are way more willing to have that discussion. Yeah. I Yo, I actually and, remember in the uh, 626 music video when we did this like rap song about the 626 a while ago, the very first opening scene is a Blasian half Taiwanese half black girl speaking Mandarin called Jayla. Shout out to Jayla. Shout out to Jayla. I need to meet her. Yeah, yeah, befriend, yeah. Dude, she's, she's old enough to watch her country. She might follow you. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, any last things? Um, uh, Ryan, you want to say, man? Uh, I guess. Like, I guess, I guess, I guess the last thing I would pair it off with is just to circle back to your duality of your career. Is it interesting that you have all these deep thoughts and important thoughts in the influencing space, which is more for like society. Everybody spends so much more time on social media now than they do on Hollywood. But for your Hollywood career, you still will be primarily going out for, for black American roles, right? I view this, the work that I'm doing in social media, because it still is entertainment as paving my way for my own brand so that I can be the person that I am. I can be Blasian, but I can also be human and I can also create my own roles. So if I do want to play a a a pilot in the next Top Gun. Shout out to Top Gun. Put me in there to be a pilot. I can just be a a pilot. That's human. Doesn't there's no race right involved in that. There's just a human who's a pilot and is good at flying an aircraft. Right. right. But I can also write a Blasian story too. Right. right. Where maybe a, you're speaking half your lines in Mandarin. Or yeah. Something where like I'm that. speaking in Mandarin. And then when I have that, then people will be like, oh, he can do both and we can we can put him in this show and then maybe we can write a little backstory where he is Asian. You know what I mean? Like, because because I feel like that would be really good for the for the community to see that diversity because you don't get to see that. Right. And it wouldn't just be bringing the black and Asian community together. It would be bringing the mix, all these mixes, all these multicultural environments together. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't I don't view the lanes as, as so much as separate anymore. I view yeah. them as synchronous. Dude, would you ever uh, go do stuff in Taiwan or in mainland? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I lived in mainland and, and modeled out there and actually had a lot of success. Um, um, yeah, but it was there were some problematic events that happened all the time out there due to not like KKK racism, but like just obliviousness, you know? And so I, 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 I know the nuance to tell the difference between those two. Oh, so you used to live in China? I used to live in China. I lived oh. in Shanghai. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And I, and, yeah. and this is, I think this is a larger conversation, but I always like, I'm always like, listen, like there's racist people in Asia, but it is like a different, it's racism. different. It's a totally different dynamics. Like I was totally like, different. you can't just transfer white and black racism from here and all that history. And then relate it and tie it into things yeah. that happen out there. Yeah. It is uh, different but I, without to say it is still ignorant I, and it's still I, with ill feelings. Uh, sometimes. I, I, you know sometimes. what? Just because we, I, you know, it's such a crazy thing to talk about. We've got to bring it up. But like, you know how like there's like, there's all these videos coming out of America, this person attacking this person. And then there's videos that come out of Africa with the Chinese business owners, mm-hmm. like whatever, with the employees and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah. when you, do you go, when you see that pop up in the, in the comments, is firing back and forth like 10,000 on yeah on, do you go gotta go to work today or you just go you know what this is one i'm i can't like this is just so many layers I, I, this is not my job to unpack this one well the thing about it is like what am i gonna i'm not gonna change those people's minds like that's not my job my job is to be proud of who i am proud of my community and, and exude that like you know you know like i used to see the hate and then respond to the hate but then i would feel horrible inside and i'd have i'd feel like j cole did after his diss to to k dot and he came back you know retracted 
I started to feel like, wait, is my whole platform about addressing hate? But then I'm always living in hate and anger. Right, because you, you have to hate the people who hate. So really it's like, you know, my dad says this all the time, like consider the source. What is the source of those people saying that thing? Let me talk about that. Mm. I don't need to address the hate in these people or try to convince them With and the change their mind. Incident. Yeah, because that's not what it's about. What is the source of why this even exists in the first place? You know what I mean? Because mm. that's a completely different conversation that I think leads to something that actually gets done and actually shows people why they think the way they think. Mm. You know? Oh. No, that is deep. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, yo, man, thank you for doing the pod. This of was course, a good man. one. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Hell yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. All right, man. You guys follow Ryan Holmes. I'm going to put all his uh, stuff down below. Instagram, TikTok, IMDB page. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't even know you were in Maverick Top Gun. I forgot. No, I I'm not. I wasn't in time. I oh, want to be I, in it. Bro, I thought you were one of the <laughs> you, pilots. You, no, you were, I do kind of look you, like yeah, one of them. Yeah, you were Blaze in, on the strip. I was Blaze on the strip. I looked it up, man. <laughs> movie with I Snipe. was Blaze. Oh. I was the light skinned villain. Yes, All right, everybody, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.